All right, guys, so I am here with my friend. Sushi. Okay, well, anyways, I am here with her, and we're going to be going ahead and doing a little ReZero review because it's something we both watch. She's watched more of it than me, though, so I'm going to let her take the wheel now, and she's going to give you guys a quick explanation of what it's about. Okay, so a brief summary of Ray Zero would probably have to be... It's about about a 17-year-old male who gets teleported into this magical fantasy world. Um, it starts out pretty normal as him just walking around exploring such and such, and then he runs into the main female um, protagonist, Amelia. Uh, Amelia has lost a sort of like an amulet, and... Subaru decides to help her find it. They go into a kind of like a warehouse, and you find out that Subaru, once he can die, he comes back to life. And the whole entire anime is about him trying to figure out why he's dying and how he can fix it so he doesn't die again. Now, while I haven't watched the entire thing, I can say there are a lot of filler episodes, but the thing with 3-0 is I really like the filler episodes because even though they're filler, stuff does happen in them, and it's not boring. Like, you know, some animes, it's like an entire episode about eating ramen or something really, really stupid, but in 3-0, it's not exactly like that. Another thing I would have to say I love about 3-0 is the comedy spectrum. It is a very hilarious anime filled with many jokes and puns. Yeah, I'd have to agree. Now, like I said, I haven't gotten as far as her, but I've seen a lot of funny things happen. Now, I'm not going to spoil all of that because we talked before we filmed this and we decided it would be spoiler-free. So basically, we're just going to give our opinions and whatnot rather than spoil what happens. Now, the last thing I have to say about ReZero is you get attached with almost every single character. You... Every single character has a different personality, and you just end up loving them all. And another thing I really love about ReZero is it's kind of like, like, you don't know what's going on at first, which I know that's how it is in every anime, but since it's in kind of the point of view of Subaru, who doesn't really know what's going on either, it kind of takes a while, and you learn what's going on little by little, and a bunch of information isn't just thrown in your face because, like, in Danganronpa, it starts off with a bunch of characters and, you know, it's all in your face and you got to try and remember all their names and what's happening and you're just a big, you're given a big puke of information um, and that's not how it is. In ReZero, you learn little by little, so it's not hard to um, remember what's going on. To add on to that, yes, this is true. It is very well-paced. But it doesn't go very slow either. I feel like it's a very well-paced anime, and you learn everything at a good time. Like, it's not jumped in, like Ginger said, but it's also, like, you get it at right times. They they work very well at giving you the information that you need at the right time. And something else I also want to add, which I can't believe neither of us thought to go over yet. There are plot twists, which I know every anime has plot twists, but, like, there are plot twists earlier on, which kind of surprised me because I don't really see that too often. Um, and it was well executed, too. I could tell it was planned. It wasn't something improvised. It was definitely something they had in mind before they created the anime, and I like that, too, about it because... You know, it feels realistic. You can understand why it happened and why it was there and how it added more depth to the plot. Another thing I want to add on on Jinder's statement is character development. Character development is done a lot and it's done right. Like, for Subaru, for example... Each time he dies, you see him change. He spirals more and more into insanity. And Rem. Rem is just a giant character. She's changed so much. Now, I haven't seen as much character development as her, but I can say I do agree with that completely because of what I have seen so far. And, you know, relationships grow, some of them shrink, you know. It's that sort of thing that I like to see because it makes the characters feel more human, and that's what attaches you to them. So this is sort of almost an add-on to what she said in the very beginning about how you get attached to the characters.
Another thing to say about characters is there are a lot of background characters, but each one, like I said, has a very different personality, so they're not forgettable. Like, if you meet a background character that's gonna come up, you remember them, because the animators put in so much detail with character, like, personality and development and design, each character is different. And adding on to that, each background character has a significance as well. They all are there for a reason. For example, Old Man Rom, he's there to protect Felt. He's not there to be there just because they wanted to put him there. He's there for a reason. Is he a background character? Yes, he's not someone insanely important, but he has a significance, and all of the characters do, and that's what I think is cool about it, because a lot of times background characters aren't incorporated into the plot at all, and they're really just there to be there. But in ReZero, they are actually used as a plot device. Now, to go into Subaru a little more in-depth, I really like the way they did Subaru. Subaru is kind of like a typical video gamer teenager who gets teleported into this fantasy world expecting it to be like a video game, and it's not. And... They made Subaru, because he is he did come from Japan, they made him look different. They made him look Japanese, and everybody else looked different, which is something you don't typically see in anime. Usually, if a person is teleported into another world, they look like a typical protagonist, but still, everybody kind of looks like them. It's a little different in ReZero. Alright, now I'm going to hand it over to Sushi for pretty much the rest of the video, and she is going to go ahead and assist me on um, plot holes and things that aren't very good, because I honestly, I didn't catch a lot of stuff I didn't quite like about it, so I'm going to let her be the one who burst your bubble so that, you know, you can be mad at her and not me because I'm really cool. So here she is. Yes, ReZero is a very good anime. But like every single anime, there's plot holes. Plot holes are very common, but they don't affect the anime very well. Because the thing I like about ReZero, after you finish the two seasons, they have a chibi version of ReZero and they explain the plot holes. They explain everything that you didn't really catch, such as why they call things certain things and why Rem did that weird hand thing. It, it explains simple things that um, you don't really catch and you wonder about. But one thing I dislike about ReZero is you never find out how Subaru gets there. It's very, the way he gets there is very odd and it's very confusing and you never figure out how. Which is, the anime isn't over yet, so it's it could be an answered question. So it's not that much of big of a deal, but I will say you will be confused and you never find out how we got there. So it's, it's odd. All right. Well, anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Um, go ahead and subscribe to my friend Sushi. It was very kind of her to assist me. And it was also very kind of her to take the time to draw herself for the animation because I know her own style is a little bit different. So, um, a quick round of applause for her and whatever. So, go ahead, subscribe to her. She loves you. We love her. Well, okay, we, we, we think she's okay. So, just, you know, she's pretty okay. I feel I am very okay, thank you.